This morning, I harvested some veggies from one of the gardens, which, full disclosure, is more of a jungle this time of year. But then I did what everybody else does. I took my army of lovable bouncy dwarves to battle against ferocious giant wolves. Oh, you don't do that? Well, let me show you Raiders of Valhalla, which is available on Steam. This falls into the category of casual indie RPGs, and it's designed for you to fail over and over. However, as you continue to fail, you actually get stronger passives and starting buffs that enhance your army, so you can push further the more you play, and ultimately, you can beat encounters or levels, and even difficulties that you couldn't beat previously. There's a bunch of different classes to pick and recruit, like warrior, healer, assassin, then you can equip them with various weapons, armor, all with unique traits that add layers to the customization within this game. In addition, you can equip relics for powerful buffs and choose different maps against certain enemies and look at what they have for attributes. That way you can test your strength of dwarves against the enemy for even more rewards. As you continue to play, you'll unlock features like the forge, pets, and even a skill tree. So tons of RPG aspects and full customization in a very casual, friendly setting. Now these battles are relatively quick, and it even includes the option to speed them up to four times the normal rate, and that's like lightning. Further, the battles are done on auto, so it's a great option for mindless multitasking as well. Alright, let's jump into some of the features a little bit more in depth. Here's a look at the main menu, incredibly simple, just like the game. Let's go ahead and select play, we're going to do a new save difficulty. I have not unlocked the next difficulty, and you have to beat a difficulty in order to get there. And like I said, this game intends for you to play over and over. Let's go ahead and start and you'll see I can choose my leader from a number of different classes. Assassin I find is pretty strong and I actually like using a ranged assassin but you can make the melee as well. Tons of customization. You can see some of the abilities here, things it has synergy with. These icons are for synergy as well. Let's go ahead and keep moving. On the next screen we can select a relic. These are incredibly powerful items and when you start off you can't choose as many of this but as you play more you'll be able to select some options like this. Take a look at a couple here, gunpowder, killing an enemy with a negative effect causes the others to explode, receiving 10% of their maximum health as damage. Sounds pretty strong. Frigg's Mirror, you return 50% of the damage taken, but take an additional 25%. I'm going to go for the gunpowder on this run, just for fun, and I haven't tried it before. Go ahead and confirm that. All kinds of things you can do here. Of course, you can see the amount of gold that you have. There's various quests you can complete to get items or even more gold as you're adventuring, and we'll start unlocking those as we do a few of the levels. A few different tabs, you can buy dwarves to recruit to your party, you can buy weapons, armor to outfit all of them, and you'll see that all of these have their own special effects and really just tons of layers of customization as mentioned. What I want to do is pick up a healer right off the bat. I actually would prefer a bard early on, but we'll pick up a healer, second best choice. Now I still have the option to buy a bard if one comes up later on. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and back out of the shop. In the inventory tab, you can customize all kinds of things. Now, I don't have any weapons or armor yet. We'll get there in just a minute, but what I want to do is actually change the order of my characters here. I want to put my warrior up front, my assassin next, and then I'll put the healer in the back. Now, I don't have a whole lot of equipment as mentioned, but let's go see if we can find some. In the raids, you can choose from several different tabs. You can see the number of the enemies. You can scroll through and see if they have armor equipped, different abilities they may have, and you can even see what possible rewards they have in addition to the gold coins. In this case, I need another weapon for some of those characters that I picked up. So let's go ahead and attack this cave one. 48% chance we're going to end up with a sword with protective health at the end. Gameplay is on automatic, as I said in the introduction. And you'll see that they're just going to march forward. There's a knockback feature. You can see some of the buffs going up. And if you're doing multitasking or anything like that, you can speed it up to four times and it's basically instant. Fortunately, I did not get the weapon reward from the first level. So let's go ahead and do another one that has another potential weapon. This one is going to be a hammer with offense to defense. So let's go ahead and depart here. On four times speed, you'll see that the enemy is just quickly dispatched and we can continue moving. This of course will scale and become more difficulty and we can start to fill up more dwarf slots. In total, you can have 10 dwarves in your party. Now that I picked that up, we'll go into inventory. I'm gonna put this on my warrior. The offense to defense trait actually grants resistance on crits. I don't find that super useful because I only have a 5% crit, but it's better than having no weapon at all. As you play through and unlock more of these passive buffs and your account progresses, you'll get more of these slots automatically. For any slots you don't have, you can use gold to purchase additional slots. Right now I've got two open ones, so there's no need for that, but I just wanna show you off how you can acquire more dwarves. Now you really wanna analyze which map you're going into. For 350 gold, 300, 300, but this one has a 6% chance. That's pretty negligible, so I'm just gonna go for the 350 gold here. I think that's my best choice. But as things get more difficulty, make sure you're checking for anything that might be troublesome. 
Here we have a much better situation, and we desperately need some armor for our dwarves. So let's take a look at this. Odin's Protection. This is going to give you a stone shell that blocks an attack every 10 seconds. That could be really useful on a character that only gets hit periodically. Freyr's Mantle has Cleansing for it, and this is going to give us a chance to nullify negative status effects. Since I vastly prefer the Odin's Protection at this point, I'm going to opt to try this level. But I want to make sure that I'm going to have a chance at killing them so my party doesn't get defeated. Looking at the enemy's strengths, I think this is suitable for my party, and I do have some white flags, which you earn as your account progresses, and this basically means that my characters can retreat without sending me back to the main menu, and I can try another level. Since I've got four of those remaining, I'm going to go ahead and chance it here, even though I think this is going to be a tough battle. Let's see if I can win. And again, feel free to speed it up as much as you like for the sake of this video and just showing the gameplay. I'm going to leave a lot of it at the normal speed. You can notice that we are chipping away at these enemies and we should take them down barring any kind of massive change in the situation here. Here we are in our inventory and we can now click on the armor tab. We can give this to any of the dwarves that we have. I'm actually going to put that on my warrior. Not the best trait in my opinion since he's going to be getting hit relatively often, but he just doesn't have any armor otherwise. So this is just going to beef up his health and even his resistance. Resistance is the amount of attack damage a unit can take before the damage affects its hit points, and you may have seen this at the beginning of the battles, it doesn't look like either side is taking damage, that's because you're working off the resistance, it's kind of like an energy shield. And again, take a look at their health, you may notice it's not taking any damage until that resistance gets broken, and then all of a sudden that enemy is going to start taking damage, so just another stat to be aware of in this game. This game, perfect for pausing at any point if you're multitasking, and you can save at any point as well. As soon as you finish the level, you can just back out, go to the main menu, and your progress will be saved. So you can pick it up and put it down really easy based on your schedule. Now that we've amassed a little bit of gold, let's go ahead and see if we can pick up a couple more dwarves. I find the warrior strong, so I'm actually going to pick up another one at this point. Now I desperately need to equip some gear in these characters, so I'm essentially just going to go for high chances on weapons and armor in order to make my dwarves stronger. I'll blitz through a couple of levels so you can see just how fast this can be done. Here we get Reflect Damage. That'll be really strong on one of my frontline characters. It's going to reflect 20% of the damage he receives. Another potential armor option here. I'm just going to go ahead and take it since there's no other choices for armor. Regardless of what the trade is, I'm going to hope that I get it and equip it for some extra health. Go ahead and give that to my assassin. Take another peek at the shop since I have 2,000 coins. If I can find a bard in here, I will pick one up at this point as well. You can check the shop after each map because the items and the dwarves within it will change. So make sure you're keeping an eye out when you're looking to purchase. Now I was able to loot a Thunderstaff and originally I was going to put this on my healer just because he didn't have a weapon at this point. But you can do all kinds of creative things in this game. In fact, I'm going to put this Thunderstaff, which has a chance to deal percentage damage on my assassin since he's going to attack more frequently. And I'll just give the bow to my healer for now. Now here's a situation you might want to be careful of. This has got three enemy dwarves. They're all outfitted in armor, which you can see on the screen. You can also take a look at their special abilities. However, I'm just going to go for a safer play at this point. If you were really worried, you could re-roll all the map options as well, just like you can do in the shop. Here we finally have a bard within the shop. I've been checking after every level. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a bard up. I like the bard with a ranged weapon, so the fact that there's a bow here is great. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. But you could go a couple of different routes as well. In fact, you give them whatever weapon you want. Choice is yours. I'm going to take a quick peek at armor as well. In fact, I really like this effect here where it does power damage to nearby enemies every second. This is great for frontline characters. So I'm going to pick one of these up and swap around some of the armor on the other dwarves. Now I've got that stone shell on the front warrior. You can always go ahead and check. At this point, I can just remember easy enough. I'm going to take that stone shell and I'm going to equip that on my healer. So my healer will have actually additional survivability as long as it only gets hit once every 10 seconds. So this should be nice. Just get some additional survivability there. And on top of that, now my frontline warrior is going to deal damage to the enemies every second that it's there. Now the new bard to the party needs some equipment as well. Here, this has a much higher chance of getting this weapon than the armor. So I'm going to opt for that map. Hopes we get that. At least then I can do some additional damage. I'll turn my bard into a caster of sorts. Now I was able to pick up another weapon. As I mentioned, I like to have my bard as ranged. And I really don't have too much of a preference at this point, whether it's a bow or even a caster weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a caster weapon on my bard. Just so you can see that in effect as well. All right, this could be a tougher map. So let's go ahead and take a challenge at this one. We'll slow it down a little bit. Looks like we're out to an early lead, but you can see as you get more dwarves, the excitement kind of increases. And again, all of this is just being done automatically. So you're really just managing your party. So this game would really appeal to people that like doing that. No luck on the armor. 
Here the enemy has three dwarves. High chance of armor. I'm going to go ahead and risk it here. As mentioned, I've still got these white flags. I haven't been defeated yet. So let's see what happens here. At the beginning here, we're just kind of pushing each other. The resistance is going. We are actually taking a lead to start. That could certainly change, but it looks like we're going to win that. One of the dwarves on their side does not have any armor, so that could be a big advantage for us once we start dealing damage to that unit. Sure enough, we take that down and do receive the armor. Every two attacks, there's an increased chance of a critical hit, so this could be great for a damage dealer. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the caster bar that I'm building at this point. Now to unlock another dwarf, I gotta spend 500 gold, but I wanna to continue to grow my party at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that slot. Now let's see if we can fill that vacant spot. I may reroll, let's take a look here. I've got two warriors in the party already, so that's not too appealing at the moment. Guardian is a tank-like character, this could be nice. And I'm also kinda of open to another healer or even another bard at this point. The healing that they both provide is really good later on, especially on the bosses. I think I'm going to do a couple of rerolls and go for the healer or additional healing route. So let's see what we get here. There's another bard here. I'm going to go ahead and pick one of those up and we'll slide them into the party. Equip them with the bow that we got remaining. And this should give me a little more survivability. So let's see how we do. Let's go ahead and speed up through a couple of more maps, just essentially farming at this point. And we should be getting pretty close to the first boss. In fact, we're there. So take a couple of looks here at what we may get. Now, this is going to have two dwarves. This is going to have two dwarves. There's three against this one. I'm not sure I'm ready to take on three plus the boss. No, they don't have any affinity bonuses. This one is a chance at a Thunderstone. I think I'm going to go ahead and try this one. Go ahead and slow this down. You can see this is the Millennial Wise Monk doing large damage with that slam. But it looks like we are going to win this at least early on. Coming back. The monk is coming back at that point. Again, just those large hits that they have may turn the tides. We've got them pretty low at this point. Two enemies remaining, one enemy remaining, and we are able to win. So we make it through the first level, and that's how quickly you can play. And I have really not edited out much of the gameplay. You can see just how fast each of the levels are. This will only continue to get quicker as you're more comfortable with configuring your party. Whenever you beat a level or stage, you can choose another relic, and this is going to further enhance your party. Golden Apple, I think this sounds pretty cool. Each enemy slain in combat permanently increases the life of each team member. I'm going to go for that. Maybe a long playthrough here when this will be advantageous. Let's go ahead and try it. You also see that the difficulty is severely ramped up at this point with a number of dwarves increasing per map. You can always reroll trying to get some better luck. But essentially you need to build your account or characters up. And this means every time you replay it, you get stronger and stronger with access to more relics, more gold to start off, and even additional dwarf slots. There's a skill tree and adventure mode coming in the future as well, so the game is continuing to be updated. So you've knocked out a few of these quests, and I like to kind of go through these as I beat each stage. As you open these up, you can choose from a number of rewards. So here I have a couple of armor options or even some additional gold, and I can use this to kind of decide, do I want to beef up my current dwarfs or do I want to add another dwarf slot with another class? A lot of ways you can go with this, but in general, it's just going to make your party stronger. Give it a try, like I said, available on Steam. Really kind of a light playthrough, very, very casual game, but enjoyable nonetheless. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.